Many have commented on uh, Pope Francis' choice of name and these rather remarkably Franciscan moves he's been making in the early weeks. Think of when he paid his own bill at the, uh, at the clergy you know, residence in Rome, or when he washed the feet of those young prisoners in Rome, or when he spoke at his inaugural mass of um, you know, the need to care for creation. So these kind of remarkably, beautifully Franciscan gestures, and all of that, of course, is true and important. But I think we've overlooked too much a very important part of his spirituality, which is the connection to Monsignor Luigi Giussani, who's the founder of Communion and Liberation. It's a very interesting movement that began in Italy and now is spread around the world. Uh, I found an article that was written about 10 years ago by then Cardinal Bergoglio, who of course became Pope Francis, and it was a, um, a contribution to a book on Giussani and his spirituality. What Bergoglio talked about was the central theme in Giussani's writing and speaking, namely the religious sense. He said part of Giussani's genius was in engaging the contemporary world, he rarely began with a dogma or doctrine. What he began with was the awakening of this often implicit but very powerful religious sensibility which runs in and through most of um, human experience. Where does it express itself? It expresses itself in terms of very fundamental questions. Where's the world ultimately come from? What's the ultimate destiny of all things? What's my life finally about? Not just my economic success or even my uh, family life and all that, but what's it ultimately about? Why is there something rather than nothing? Questions such as that. Now, we religious people know that the ultimate answer to those questions is God. Only God can finally answer those questions, which is why the Bible says, only in God is my soul at rest. Why Augustine, as I often quote, famously said, Lord, you've made us for yourself. Therefore, our heart, that means the part of us that raises those questions, is restless until it rests in thee. Now, what Cardinal Bergoglio saw, and I thought was really interesting, reflecting on this religious sense, is that our contemporary secularist society is the one that systematically suppresses these questions and thereby does tremendous damage, both psychological and spiritual, to human beings. He specified by saying secularism as an ideology is concerned above all with scientific knowledge and economic attainment. Those two great values. So the physical sciences, absolutely good, important, useful. We tend so to valorize scientific ways of knowing that we block out this more intuitive type of knowing associated with the religious sense. In the economic realm, we so prioritize, so valorize economic good that we leave out these great goods of the spirit that transcend, even infinitely transcend, economic good. Secularism is a conscious shutting down of the religious sense. As I say, causing enormous damage to us, the same way any kind of suppressed, powerful passion leads to all sorts of problems. The systematic ideological suppression of the religious, which is what you find in secularism, does great damage. You know what comes to mind here very much is uh, one of my great intellectual heroes, namely Blaise Pascal. Pascal, the 17th century scientist, he was first that, a great mathematician, great scientist, who was an eager participant in the birth of what we now know as the modern sciences. But right away, Pascal understood the importance of the religious sense, which is why he said, Le cœur a ses raisons que la raison ne connaît pas. The heart has its reasons that reason knows not. He's not talking about some sentimentalism or some emotionalism. By heart, cœur in his French, he means this deepest ground of the soul which raises and seeks to answer the religious questions. Le cœur, the heart, has its reasons that reason knows not. That means it's a kind of 
rationalism, if you want, that goes beyond the ordinary rationalism of the sciences. Pascal famously said that we spend much of our lives diverting ourselves from the fundamental questions. In his French, we engage in divertissement, diversions. So in his day, and of course he, he loved gambling and gaming and all that, gambling and womanizing and so on, drinking were the diversions of his time. We have all those, of course, too, but we also have today. I mean, think of, of, of the internet, think of you know, trivial texting, think of Facebook and all those things good in themselves. I'm using internet right now. But I mean, we can uh, use them as divertissement, as diversions from the fundamental questions. Now, when Pope Francis speaks of going out to the periferia, that's the term he used in, in Italian in, in a recent talk, the periphery, yes, you do think of those on the economic margins of society. And that's a very good Franciscan instinct. And I think he does mean that. The church has to have an instinct for the periphery, those on the margins. But I would say periferia also means those who are on the margins in terms of the religious sense. Those victims, if you want, of the secularist ideology that are suffering from the suppression of these deepest uh, questions. One of my favorite images from Francis in his you know, recent talks is that the shepherd should smell like his sheep. It means that he was telling priests, you got to be out you know, with your people, close to your people. So you have the, the scent of your people on you. Well, see, part of it is shepherds should smell like those who are spiritually on the periphery. Shepherds should get close to those who are victims of the secularist ideology and whose religious sensibility has been suppressed. That, I think, is a very important Jusani sort of dimension of France's call to go to the periphery.